Remember the Rayshard Brooks police shooting in Atlanta? It happened just two weeks after George Floyd, so it was always kind of overshadowed, but this was the case where a drunk and high Rayshard Brooks was found asleep at the wheel at a Wendy's drive through After failed sobriety tests, he was placed under arrest, and because he was on probation for serious crimes, including felony cruelty to children and domestic abuse, that arrest meant he was headed back to prison. So he resisted that arrest, and he stole a cop's taser, and he pointed that taser at the cops, and he fired, and he was then fatally shot for his efforts. And then, of course, that Wendy's had to be burned down by Black Lives Matter activists, because if only that red-headed floozy had tempted Rayshard with her delicious hamburgers, Rayshard would have driven safely home to his daughter's birthday party where he said he was going, you know, drunk and high. He was planning a surprise birthday beating for her in the morning. He was just a hard-working, dedicated family man, despite his dedication to substances and abusing his family prior. That's what the propaganda told us to believe. And for whatever reason, I had a mistaken perception that story was already over, at least as a legal matter, but actually far from it. Both officers involved still face serious charges. Garrett Rolfe, the cop who took the shot, faces a murder charge, and his partner, Devin Brosnan, faces an aggravated assault charge. It's just the trial hasn't happened yet because of procedural delays. Mostly the fact that the original DA on the case was wildly corrupt in general, and in this case specifically outright inventing things into the case that never happened. Falsely claiming Rolf kicked Brooks when he was down, it didn't happen. It was just a still frame selected specifically by the DA to make it look like it did. But Rolf was actually jumping over Brooks to cuff him. The DA also said Rolf said, quote, I got him after the shot, but there's no evidence for that either. And then only a few months after bringing those charges, that corrupt DA was voted out of office. He's now facing federal investigation for corruption and separate financial matters, and the new DA wants nothing to do with the case, presumably because she knows it's complete bullshit. So the court granted a motion for her recusal and to have the attorney general appoint some other guy to handle it, which he's done, and that new prosecutor has since promised a fresh set of eyes for the case. So the whole process started over again. Meanwhile, Officer Rolf was quietly reinstated to his job with the Atlanta Police Department. Immediately after the shooting, he was fired in knee-jerk fashion, a firing that itself was later determined to be additional procedural malfeasance. His firing was so hasty that the paperwork contained several errors, and Rolf wasn't given adequate time to respond and defend himself, so an oversight board determined his due process rights were violated. But hey, who could blame them? They had to fire him in a hurry, or poor Wendy would take another hit. Just like Rayshard Brooks, they did it for the kids. So nearly two years out, and the state is still struggling to build its case for murder while simultaneously paying the man they're accusing of it, or at least they paid him back pay, though it's highly likely they're still paying him now as an employee on administrative leave because everybody knows that these charges and this trial are a sham. They just have to be done to appease the mob. And as ridiculous as all of that legal mess is, none of it is even close to the most ridiculous things that have happened in the Rayshard Brooks aftermath. Don't forget that an eight-year-old girl was shot dead by the gang that occupied that Wendy's turf a month later, apparently for no reason other than her family was trying to turn the car around and leave. And even if it's not murder, this latest development from the Wendy's ashes still strongly competes in its absolute clownery. It turns out that one of those Wendy's arsonists had his own criminal sideshow shortly thereafter, a criminally incompetent sideshow for which he is now convicted. If to honor Rayshard Brooks is to commit crimes even more stupid than his, well, consider his legacy preserved. John Wesley Wade is one of three people now indicted for that Wendy's arson. He was arrested but bonded out and apparently hadn't had enough of burning things because within only a few months, he was back to starting other fires around the Atlanta metro. He joined two others, Ellie Melvin Britt and Vita Jones, in a multi-day spree of vandalism and arson around the city. And these weren't just generic crimes. These were crimes committed with the intent and the effort to frame their political opposition for them. These were supposed to be MAGA crimes, but the trouble is... They were even less believable than Rayshard Brooks just heading to a birthday party. The arson and vandalism spree spanned two nights from the evening of September 30th to the early morning hours of October 2nd, 2020. 
On the first night, the vandals threw bricks through two police car windows and a Wells Fargo Bank storefront. In two of the cases, attaching notes to the bricks that said stand by, intended to be a reference to Trump saying the Proud Boys should stand back and stand by at the presidential debate the night prior. Proud Proud Boys, Boys, stand back and stand by. These notes also included references to Election Day and the Electoral College. On night two, the crimes escalated from vandalism to arson. A Transit Authority police patrol vehicle was lit on fire. Two hours later, several fires were set at a post office. The fires damaged five post office vehicles and destroyed mail in a bin on the post office's loading dock. The arsonist then went to a convenience store to buy supplies, including a red gas can. Good for him for buying it legally, but only in 2020 is a masked man buying a gas can at one in the morning not suspicious. He's just a struggling traveler trying to mitigate viral spread to his fellow citizens, of course. The arsonist then used that gas can to light two more public works department vehicles on fire. In this instance, again, throwing a brick through one of the car windows with a note that said, stop the faithless elector vote in the White House, among other things, including several Bible verses with a misspelled reference to the book of Jeremiah, The arsonists lit one more transit police vehicle on fire for good measure before they called it a night. By November 3rd, only a month later, all three were arrested and charged with Georgia state and federal crimes since that Postal Service property was federal property, and a New York Antifa group tweeted encouragement for them, saying they were facing extreme repression and these comrades need support. Apparently the comrades went unsupported, though. The two other men have pleaded guilty and faced sentencing later this month, and John Wesley Wade, the Wendy's arson man, was sentenced to five years in federal prison last Monday. He's still to be tried for the Wendy's arson later if convicted. That sentence will be separate. It will not run concurrently. And the evidence that did them in is largely the normal stuff you'd expect. Wade's fingerprints were present on one of the bricks, Surveillance footage at the scenes of their crimes and the convenience store made them identifiable. It is dumb to get caught by things that should be easily foreseeable, but the stupid goes to much more special depths in this case. The arsonists used their own credit cards to make the incriminating purchases immediately nearby the scenes of their crimes. Ironically, they probably would have been better off just stealing the gas can instead. Or maybe not because they were dumb enough to insist on their own identification through other means too, like posting videos of their crimes on social media and then promoting those posts for media and law enforcement investigators to look into. Some of these crimes the arsonists recorded on video themselves and posted to Instagram while saying on video, proud boys stand by, This specific account was apparently supposed to be some sort of fake Proud Boy or Trump supporting account, but upon investigation was connected to one of the arsonists. And the arsonists promoted this Instagram account by referencing it on their brick notes and commented on other posts about the fires, where's the media coverage? begging for the very investigation that did them in. But just to wrap up the stupidity of this crime and the original Rayshard Brooks story into one neat little clown package, there's still one more piece of conclusive evidence. Location data from the arsonist's ankle monitor. Yes, that's right. Per his prior bond release for the Rayshard Brooks Wendy's arson, John Wesley Wade was required to wear a tracking device at all times, and GPS data from that tracking device placed him at the locations and the times of the vandalism and the arson. So you go through all that effort to try to frame your political enemies for your crimes without doing the basic work of cleaning up the obvious evidence that leads straight back to you. It's moronic, but hey, with today's media and political cover for crimes of the right persuasion and the right pigmentation, maybe it wasn't that absurd to think that they were going to get away with it. From any large-scale media scrutiny, they already have. When the arrests were first made, national coverage of this story was next to none, and the local coverage said they left notes with just general political rhetoric. Even though it was known what these notes said at the time, it was known these notes were fake, and attempted framing of Trump supporters. It wasn't just these guys expressing their own generic political views. It was them fabricating a narrative about their opposition being violent people while they commit their own violence 
habitually. And all the while, we are all propagandized to believe it's the Proud Boys or whatever obscure fairy tale boogeyman they want to blame who's the real threat to commit exactly these acts. Surely those crimes are coming, so stay vigilant while we excuse and ignore the ones that actually happen. If these crimes were actually committed with sincerely worn MAGA hats, Adam Kinzinger would have cried at a congressional hearing about it a dozen times over by now. But since they weren't, nobody sheds a tear. We cry about fiction and we shrug about reality. It turns out that Rayshard Brooks was just our country personified, severely impaired and asleep at the wheel, but surely with all the best intentions. Thanks as always for listening and for supporting this channel. Always appreciate that thoughtful discussion down below and especially over on Minds that is at N L Christensen. You're always welcome to coming out and chat in my live streams. Those are linked down in the description. Looking forward to it. Goodbye.